Hi, everybody. I'm Alicia. And I'm Alec, and welcome to our podcast, Twin Talk. And this podcast is just so, for me and my twin brother, yes, we are actually twins, and we're going to talk about just random uh, different pop culture um, subjects. So if you ever have any good topics for us to talk about or debate, we'd love to know. You can leave it in the comments below. But for today, we decided to start off with something eh, pretty easy. We're going to just talk about the new Incredibles movie, Incredibles 2. So, Alec, I wanted to start off talking about that short <laughs> that followed, that was in front of uh, the Incredibles 2. Well, what's her, what was it, Bow or Bow or something? It's, it's Bow. Bow, Bow. Bow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I know, but I, I honestly want to like know... It? No, no, I don't know what you thought about it. I liked it. It was, jeez, it was, yeah, I liked it. Oh, and just, just for our listeners, we have not yet talked about this movie. So what you're hearing is our first reactions to each other about this movie. <laughs> but, Alec, what did you think about it? Okay, so I have to let people know that I work in a movie theater. So... At the movie theater, when I go and check theaters, like an usher, I walk in and make sure everything's going okay and people aren't doing illegal things. I see clips of the movie. So when Avengers, I mean, I'm sorry, when Incredibles 2 came out, that short, I always, like, I would see, like, little bits and pieces until I actually watched the whole movie. And the first part I walk into <laughs> is when she eats that thing. <laughs> <a> dumpling. <laughs> I'm like, what is going on? So you saw the whole short though, right? From the beginning? Yeah, that's all yeah, that's all the whole thing. Okay. So okay. <laughs> this is crazy because Alec, yeah, it does. It turns out to be like an allegory. Like at first you don't know that. Like the dumpling or the yeah, it's like a dumpling or a meat bun. You don't know that it's supposed to represent her son until the end. But so the whole time you're watching it, you're just like, Wait, what? It's in these sprouts legs and and then I thought it was going to be like, oh, maybe she has a kid, but she can't come forever because he's food. Like, he's going to, like, not last. But then he grows up, and I was like, oh, never mind. It's not about that. So I was like, where is this going? And then Alec, that pivotal moment when she eats him, I was just like, <gasps> I was like, what? <laughs> and Alec, the stupid part is, I went and saw this movie at a matinee. I saw it, like, um, a few days after it came out. And it was still act and there were kids from like infants all the way to like teenagers to an adult so the the um the theater was packed but alec all the adults you could just see them like staring at the screen like what the fuck just happened and then all the kids are laughing at that part <laughs> were they laughing in your theater yeah some people laughed a lot of people were just they were just wild over like what yeah, like, oh my god, that's the right, that's the right kind of, um, expression, but, uh, they were laughing, yeah, I'm just looking around, laughing. I'm just like, I mean, I mean, it was usually, it was mostly, like, younger kids, because, I, yeah, I think it was just mostly younger kids, but I feel like all the older people were just staring at the screen, like, what the heck just happened, and then I was like, okay, so maybe this isn't real, like, it's all in her head, and then she goes and cries, and then it just keeps going and going, and I was like, when is this going to when is this uncomfortableness yeah, going to end? I thought it was going to end when she ate him. <laughs> that would have been so tragic. Some Freudian yeah, stuff going on like, right there. Like, that's it. Very, very Freudian. But, 
I just wanted to say, because I think it's interesting that some people who didn't understand the cultural background, like, there were people who didn't even understand the short, and I'm just like, how can you not get it? And then they think it's, like, a lost in translation because it's different cultures, but it's clear. Like, she's a protective mom. You know, she's suffering from um, the empty nest. Like, you got you got that, right? Yeah. Yeah, like, how can you not get it? And then, I don't know, some people just thought, like, it was weird or it wasn't that good, but I thought it was really well done. I thought it was... Oh, yeah, I think it was just all, it was all metaphorical. Yeah, it was metaphorical. It was cute. It was cute and animated well, and... You know, she obviously she she wants to keep her little boy, little boy, and then he wants to go off, and then he comes home with a white woman, and she's just like can't take it. <laughs> well, I think it was like she came home with a woman, and I don't know why they just have to make her white. <laughs> they couldn't even make her a woman of like their own nationality; it just had to be a white woman. Because I think that goes into the whole "I'm losing my son" thing. Like the woman, yeah. like the mom or the main character is like traditional Chinese, so put that, throw that in the mix, she's probably just feels like she got bamboozled or something. <laughs> right. But, yeah, I really liked, I really liked this short. I don't know what else to really say about it. I don't understand when people say they don't get it. I mean, other than the eating thing part, I mean, that was really weird, but after that, you should be able to connect the dots. <laughs> but just the fact that the kids were laughing, and I'm just like, this was really uncomfortable and weird and not funny. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel I kind of was confused at first because all it was is like it just represents they had a fallout, like they just had an argument because they were both sad at the end about how their argument went. But I don't know what her eating them was supposed to represent other than him being a dumb boy. Like, other than that, it's like what? Like they were arguing, you could have just walked out the door and left. You know what I mean? But I guess it was just for effect, really. Yeah. So yeah, that's our thought. Of, that's our thoughts on Dow, and although also that it's you know it's crazy that this even has to be pointed out, but it's like the it's the first Pixar short to be directed by a woman. It's like, hmm, Pixar. What? How how old are you now? Let's see, ninety five. Like uh, twenty twenty three years old. Now just getting women up here. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. See, no one knows. No, okay. no, one, no one knows. <laughs> you know, how many short films are made by men or women. Yeah, but that's a cool fun fact. Fun fact. <laughs> so uh, now to get into The Incredibles. Wow. I just, I feel like I should... Incredible, incredible, incredible. Punching the bad guy. Pow, pow, pow. What? what are you singing? <laughs> I was singing the theme, the Mr. Incredible theme. You never heard it? Oh my god, what did you memorize it? <laughs> the one time yeah, you saw I'll it? Tell you, every, listen, every time I go and clean the theaters, it plays at the end of the credits. <laughs> so yeah, I memorized it because I cleaned it. I listened <laughs> to it like eight times a day, every three hours. <laughs> <laughs> like, because we have to clean all the theaters, and then it's like at, at the end, you know, you, you clean it, and then like every time a theater falls, like people. Leave just like every two and a half hours after every movie. So yeah, I got pretty well with it. <laughs> He's like, so yeah, I know it. Okay, yeah, like, yeah. mind you, I saw the movie once, like a month ago. So you can cut uh, me some slack, like. <laughs> okay. Um. You want to hear it again? Yeah, I do. Mister Incredible, Incredible, Incredible. Punching a bad guy, pow, pow, pow. That's a good theme song. <laughs> yeah. But, was, oh, okay. So I was going to say I should lead with the good before I rip this thing to shreds. <laughs> that I, did I like the movie? Yes. Did I think it was worth waiting for? Sort of, yeah. I mean, I still wanted to see the movie. So regardless, even if it was, like, terrible, I was still going to see that movie in the theaters. Um... The only benefit, I think, of waiting so long is that the animation is tight. Like, Ali, that scene, you probably know it. The scene um, where Elastigirl is chasing... The is she chasing, Yeah, the train, and she's going off the buildings like in the sky. Like, because it's the sunset and the sky, all the colors of the skies and the angles of, the like, the buildings and stuff. Yeah, right. It was looking good. Um. Oh, the dialogue is still really good. I think... 
man, I can't. I don't, and let's. I don't want to compare it to the first movie because we got to compare. I mean, we got to like talk about this film as is, and it's still hard to. <laughs> it's hard to do, but yeah, the dialogue is still really like witty and. I want to say like real, authentic. That's the word. It sounds like real people who have real conversations and have real prob like real problems in their daily lives. You know. Mm-hmm. I was like, do I think it was worth fourteen years? I think so. Did I like it? I did. Do I think it's for everybody? No. <laughs> no. I hate people who bring their kids in there all the time. And I know some of you people probably brought their kids in there. But follow me on this one. It's been 14 years. Anyone like under 16 or even under 18 shouldn't even be in the theater like that. What? Go and watch it like it's a big thing. They got all these fans with their little t shirts and their little toys. Where were you? And then, of course, <laughs> before the movie comes out, it comes on ABC Family or Freeform now, it's called, all the time. Incredible. Uh, the first one comes on TV, so of course you can get them caught up. And that just assumes the whole purpose. They haven't been reading. They don't understand. They don't understand the struggle, the withdrawal we had. Oh my uh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, don't bring your children to see a children's film. <laughs> don't, no, no, yeah. That, every children's film isn't for children. That's what I'm saying. Mm. Yeah, you go, you go take your kids to see Frozen. That's good. You see them see Tangled. Great for them. You see them, you see Wally. You know what? Good for them. But when you can see Toy Story 3 and when you see Incredibles 2, leave your kids at home. Are you trying to say because this is what, like, younger people have been waiting for forever? This is for right, them? Right, exactly. <laughs> mm. I feel like that's sometimes, I feel like the, the movie was aimed for people our age, like from 18 to 30. Like our demographic age, I feel like that's what they were pointing the movie towards. And the only reason I say this is because I've had people bring their children and they end up leaving early or they stay at the end where the kids, I ask them, I'm like, how was your movie, bud? And then he says, I didn't like it. It scared me. Incredibles 2? Yeah, because of everything that happens in it. And then Hmm. we have a sign. That says Incredibles 2 isn't good for people with like epilepsy or stuff with all the lights because of all the bright lights and the hypnotisms and stuff. Yeah. So it's like, but I'm just saying, I've, but I've had a handful of times where people, kids say they didn't like it or it's, and, and or it scared them because of the stuff in it, the fighting, the explosions, the bad guy, whatever. And sometimes that makes me feel like it wasn't meant for us, but I never heard a kid, or it wasn't meant for them, for children, that. Never heard a kid say frozen scared them. <laughs> I mean, I've never heard. I never heard him say, "Yo, oh, Wreck It Ralph scared them." Like, so I just feel like uh, they were aimed toward the demographic age of eighteen to thirty because that's what we've been waiting for for the last fourteen years. So they put a little bit more edge into it to keep us uh, attentive to the screen. Hmm. They, I feel like they wanted to please us more. I- that's an interesting point, uh, because, so, Alec, uh, in the audience, our older sister, she asked me if she could, she really wanted to see this movie, and she's like, well, can I just take her, uh, she wanted to take her son, who was, th- he was he's three, and she's like, do you think he'll like it? And I'm like, it's a cartoon, like, I'm sure it'll be fine, but <laughs> I was like, this is a movie you've been waiting for and you really want to see, why even bring your kid, like, you should just go see it, because what if you get to leave or something because of him? And that's interesting that you said that because that means maybe he probably would have liked all the visuals. But, you know, you said, like how you said this was probably for us, like uh, the people who've been waiting. It's weird that, Alec, they set the film, like the, where, the time period where the, the film was set, they set it literally right after. Not even like time has passed. Literally, right after the first one. Right after they walked out the stadium. And I thought that was really weird. Like, they could have had, like, a few months or a year or whatever go by. But no, like, it's just, it just feels odd because it's been 14 years, but yet you want to start your movie right where the last one picked off, picked up, or whatever. And it just was jarring because the thing is, 
And I've seen, like, The Incredibles, like, a million times. That's, like, one of the few films that I can always just watch when it's on TV or just rewatch because it's just that, like, daggone good. But even I forgot some, like, little tidbits. Like, the fact that, Allie, did you, like, realize that technically while the audience knows that Jack-Jack has powers that the characters in the film don't, because technically, yeah, because right. at, the, at the end of the first one, it happened when he was in the sky with Syndrome, and they couldn't see what was going on. So only the audience saw, and then by the time he was back on the ground, he was already, like, his human baby form. Did you realize that? Yeah, I did. I remember that. Yeah, so, I mean, I figured that out in the middle of the film when, like, <laughs> Jack Jack's finding that raccoon, and then uh, Bob comes out, and he's like, you have powers! And they showed that in the trailers, and in the trailers, I was like, why is that such a big reveal? Like, we know it. We know that. Like, it's not a reveal. But it's a reveal to them, but the payoff isn't good because we've known. Like, we've known for 14 years. So the fact that the characters are now just finding out, it's not, like, a good payoff. It's not like, oh, my God, this is epic. This is the best discovery. Like, this is what we've been waiting for, you know? Right. It kind of, so that's, that was kind of one of the downsides of having the movie come out much later, but even if they were going to have it come out much later, maybe they should have, I don't know, moved it forward in the actual timeline, or, I don't know. I, I agree, I thought that was a little odd, and the fact that I didn't see the first Incredibles again before I watched the second one, there were some things I kind of forgot, um... Like, um, I can't really think of any. Like, I knew, like, the house blew up. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot about like, that part. <laughs> like, in the beginning, when they're all like, the guys could totally tell the story, and he's under the car, and they run, he said, oh, I saw these boots. And the family runs, and they're like, should we be doing this? We're still illegal. And in my head, I'm like, when did they become illegal? <laughs> and you're like, like oh, oh, yeah, that's right. They're technically running them the first movie. <laughs> Right, because I did, I just, like, after the island, and then at the end when, uh, what's his name, the underminer comes up, mm-hmm. and he puts a mask on, and we'll be all heroic, and yeah. look at each other like, ooh, we're a family, we're gonna beat this guy up. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking, why would you do that in the first place if you knew you were illegal? Right, so yeah, it looks like, it looks like yeah, they went over that hurdle already. Like, within the three months you know, something happened where they can be public, but that doesn't. Right. And it gives off, yeah, and, oh my gosh, because I didn't watch the first movie right before I saw the second one. Like, I hadn't mm-hmm. planned on it, but then I was like, maybe I should have, because there was little stuff, and then while I was watching it, and I was like, oh yeah, that's right, that did happen. Like, even though I know, even though I knew at, at the end of the first one, the house blew up, it, it still shocked me when they're in the motel, and I was like, what the, heck, what the heck, why are they in a motel? Well, where were they living? <laughs> <laughs> when they were uh afterwards, when they were at the track game, the track game, where were they living then? Because they the were, house was already blown up. No, they were probably still in the motel. Because remember, they were like, you only have this much time left before we can't uh, help yeah. you out anymore. So they were probably there, but that means they were there for like three months. But it's just, right. it's just too jarring. You forget. It's like I remembered, but then I kind of forgot at the same time. But you know, you know, you know I also forgot. What? Which is when we took my our oldest sister. That's from Atlanta. And she wanted to go to the theater Incredible too, so I took her. And I think she agreed at the end uh, that she's glad she came alone instead of bringing her son. Oh, that's, anyway. that's crazy. Wait, so you, you saw it with her? Yes. See, I told her. But anyway, keep going. <laughs> so she, she brought up the point that she forgot that the Incredible is based in like a 15, 16 time period. Right. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, because you can know she like is the way from those dress and the stuff that everyone else wears. And they're like, that's how she noticed. And I was like, I totally forgot that they're still in like a freaking doo-wop phase. <laughs> they're in like a futuristic, like retro 60s kind of era. Yeah. yeah. You know why? Because there's this, so there's this um review on YouTube. You probably, some people probably heard of him. His name, it's called uh, Your Movie Sucks. <laughs> and he was reviewing uh, The Incredibles 2. And it was about what I expected from him. And then he said that he liked he liked that the second film remembered that they were in the 60s or something. Because the first film, it's like they started off that way. But somewhere in the middle, they just forgot they were supposed to be in the 60s. <laughs> and All then right. this one, it's so clear. Like, it's they like the aesthetic of, like, the house and the furniture and the technology. It's, uh, it screams, yes, we are in the 60s. And it stays that way the whole film. 
Whereas the, the first film kind of just dropped that off. <laughs> like, yeah, we kind of forgot about where we were supposed to be. Right. Um, geez. Yeah, wow, that's well, crazy. I'm, I'm glad she saw it by herself. That's what she, that's what she should have done. <laughs> one thing I wanted to bring up is characters, but specifically, like, the first movie, my favorite person was Dash. Because one of my favorite super superpower is super speed. Mm-hmm. Or also, I just feel like, I don't know, I just like his character. So I was excited to see him, but in the second one, oh. it's not that I was disappointed about him, but someone else called my eye. I am glad that they showcased Frozo a lot more in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> you like that, like... And I was like, <laughs> I was like, Frozo is a man. Like, he did so much in this movie that it's like, I guess it shows how much a part of their life that he's in, and just like, oh, well, we all know what his powers are, but we don't see him do it all like that. And in the second one, I think he just went off. Like, he just did so much stuff <laughs> that made me be like, man, bro, like, Frozo was my favorite character in the second movie. Yeah, I like Frozone. I don't know who was my favorite in the first. I mean, I liked Frozone. I don't think I had a favorite. But I still liked him. I mean, he was way better. That was, like, the big plus. More Frozone in the second film. And then, because of the technology, his ice powers even look way better. Right. Um, but, speaking of, let me, so like, plot and characters. This is why I have a hard time with The Incredibles 2. Because everyone's giving it these, like, raving reviews. And it's not that it's not... It's not that it's a bad movie, because it's far from a bad movie. I just don't think it was all that. Like, I really liked it. It was worth waiting for. But when you compare it, I think, actually, I think The Incredibles 2 is better than other Pixar sequels, but still not as good as just Pixar films, you know? Right. And it's right in that middle, because I think the plot is lacking really bad. (laughs) The I mean, it's good, it has good moments, and it has good, like, themes sometimes when it wants to, but it's just a role reversal of the first film, and where our characters, because you brought up characters, where in the first film, I thought, Alex, that the characters grew, like, they weren't the same as they were from the beginning, from the, like, beginning movie Dash is completely different from end of movie Dash. They learn, they grow, they... You know, their characters kind of expand in, like, for the better. But in the second film, do you think beginning movie Dash from the second Incredibles is different from the end of movie Dash? Like, they don't really go anywhere with their characters. No, uh, no. Like, you remember, so in the first one, like, Dash is, he wants to show his powers, but he know he can't, so he acts out in ways because, you know, he's, he has, he needs, like, an outlet for like, how he feels, and by the end, he becomes a bit more responsible, a bit more confident, and so does Violet, like, she's, quote-unquote, in the beginning, she's a shrinking Violet, she's shy, and she doesn't want to, she's not proud to have superpowers, she just wants to be normal, but by the end, she's, like, owning it, like, this is part of my identity, like, come at me, and she learns how to, like, be, like, confident within her powers, and she gets way better, and then, like, the biggest change is, obviously, our main character, Mr. Incredible, a.k.a. Bob, who in the beginning, you know, he's basically going through this midlife crisis, but by the end he realizes that he can't be strong by himself. His family is what makes him strong, and it's better that they work together as a team and all this blase, blase, blase stuff. <laughs> right? In the certain, okay, so it's just like reversed in the second movie. Now, it's not that he's having a midlife crisis, but now it's role reversal. Oh, I have to take care of the kids, but I'm only selfishly doing it because I want super- superheroes to come back because he's still obsessed with becoming a superhero again. <laughs> and nothing nothing developed for him. He developed so much in the first one. And, I mean, not that he didn't develop in the second one, but it's not really as clear as a journey. And that's what I kind of didn't really like about the film. The characters didn't really evolve, and it kind of felt like it was just a reworking of the first film. You know? Like the people. No, you know what I say? I feel like that was an episode, not a movie. Oh my god, that's a yo, that is such a good way to put and it. And it's crazy because, not to be insulting to people, but I find it, I, can, I think of that when I think of Spongebob. Because Spongebob, <laughs> per episode, their problem happens and gets fixed and resolved. 
at the end of the episode, and then the next episode has nothing to do with the first episode. So I feel like, like probably two of the epi- one episode of their life, but it wasn't like no clear direction of where they're going from here. Right. Oh, man. That's good. Too, too open and yeah. Like, there was even talk that maybe there may even be an Incredibles 3 because they have so many more plot lines. And once again, of course, I'm all up to see another Incredibles film. But it, it'd be, you just don't want to see films just to see films. You want to see them because they're going to be great. Like, they're going to be mind-blowing. But this one wasn't. And then when it came to characters, the new ones that they introduced, some of them have pretty cool powers, but then you don't even really get to see them because they get no screen time. And when they do get screen time, they're... Being hypnotized for evil, I'm just like, wow, okay, I'm glad we got to see that. Yeah, but you don't get to learn about them as characters. Oh no. Like that, the I don't, I don't even remember their names, but the girl who could create the wormholes. Void. Oh, is that her? What's her name? Uh, Void. Oh, Void. Okay, that's what I was gonna say. Something like Vortex. I was like something with a V. I don't know. Like she kind of seemed like she could have been. Like her powers are really cool. I wish we could have gotten more with her working with working off other characters more than she did, and then she didn't. <laughs> but yeah, uh, hang on. I'm not, I thought I could say with us and all of you is that we, I think Violet was a badass in this movie. Oh yeah. Um, it's crazy. Then, that- okay, so what? I said, oh, I was going to say it's crazy that we're focusing on Dash and Violet because everyone just seems to always talk about Jack-Jack. And I was like, oh, calm down with me and Jack-Jack. <laughs> yeah, everyone always says, I hear when they come out the theater, Jack-Jack was their favorite. And I'm like, he's not even close to my favorite. He, he was good, but <laughs> I feel like when people have so much focus on that, it just annoys me. Like, when people love Gary from SpongeBob, it will be the person Gary. <laughs> I'm like, oh, the snail. Why do you keep comparing this to SpongeBob, huh? I don't know. I don't know because it's comparable too. Mm. I don't know if that's a good sign or Okay, so I was saying, uh, specifically in the movie, the bad guys, well, not the bad guys, they're kind of just the good guy and the ones that make the bad guys. Oh, gosh. I'm so glad we got to this part. Let's hear it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, to be honest, I thought it was. Okay. I was like, oh, ladies and you, you would be inventing things, and I would be selling them. Oh, that, oh, okay. That was, That's what you yeah, thought of? that aspect. Oh, yeah, man. Well, <laughs> would, would really be evil. I mean, I think it's a, that's a toss-up. Hmm. Because I believed in what the sister was saying about why she doesn't like superheroes. Like, we, because it makes people feel we can depend, like, we depend on them to save us, and we feel like we can save ourselves, but we don't need them. But then we need to go off killing them all. <laughs> Genocide. Or we can, you know, make them a I mean, I just think that we should just end it for ourselves. And that's in any superhero film. Like, we only need, like, Batman and Superman and the Avengers. Except the Avengers are more alien-based. So I guess we do need them. But other things, like, I feel like we can just do it ourselves. We don't need you. But, <sighs> um... And then, I don't know, I just think the relationship was pretty good, and their story about their dad, how they saw two different sides of it, and you know, what made them who they are. I guess that part was fine with them. I mean, jeez, I don't, the only reason with this duo is that I, the villain is so weak. Like, I understand, like, where she's coming from, and she even had that monologue she has when she's talking to, um, Helen, Elastigirl, when she's, when she's like, in the freezing chamber, and she's basically right. monologuing, and you kind of get the theme, and the theme is like, the screens nowadays are controlling people, and people can't think for themselves, which is a really good message for today's society. Like, I got that, okay? I got when she's talking about all that. But, her reasoning is really stupid, because, I mean, I mean, no, I mean, her dad was kind of stupid. He was sitting there calling, and he tried another phone, like, maybe you should go into the safe phone, and then call her. Maybe, ah, jeez, I don't know. If someone's breaking in, you won't, you're really going to wait for someone to come and hurt you. But, oh, her plan is stupid because, I just remembered, it's dumb because she wants to get rid of superheroes, and by doing that, she wants to show that they're dangerous and they can't be made legal, but yet no one was trying to make them legal except for her and her brother. So no one was even coming at with this making them legal. And 
she even she even did her whole evil plan after the 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 bill was signed or whatever that thing was on the ship that was ratified or what signed after it was signed is when she put her plan into motion to have the ship crash into the coast to crash into the city so they can show that hey supers are dangerous let's not make them legal but they already signed it so I was like why don't the point <laughs> nobody cared no one was making legal no one was making supers legal until her and her brothers came and said let's make you legal because her plan was to dress them up and make them look real good and say you know build them up so that when they fall from grace it'll be that much harder and they're just stupid oh and then oh and then disney they just love their stupid surprise villains whatever happened to just having a villain be a villain why did it have to be a surprise it was so flipping obvious it, she was the villain <laughs> like am i right or am i right <laughs> You didn't, oh, did you, saying, you didn't think well, it was? Right, right. I'm just saying, when, the, when I was watching the movie, I fell for it. Like, I, I knew. I was like, something's not right with this girl. Like, she just seems odd. Like, she seems like she's just not, you don't know, she didn't seem on the same page as everyone else. And I knew I had that feeling, and I thought she would have a role, or she would be someone to have a change of heart, like, midway in the movie. But I didn't expect she was the bad guy from the start. So I fell for that. I was like, what? I said, I knew it, though. I was like, I knew she was something. <laughs> and even, but even if you didn't know right away, because <clears throat> in the beginning, like, the first half of the movie, she's dropping sort of kind of hints. But even if, okay, but let's say you still don't know it's her. You definitely know it's her. When Girl catches the guy, and then she's, like, putting it together, and she's like, but really, he was a pizza guy. Like, he was smart enough to do all this, and she's truly really trying to poke holes into this story. But then, what's her face? Evelyn is there, and she's like, no, but you got him. Be happy, and then blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, now we definitely know. <laughs> like, you're up yeah. to something. Because <clears throat> she's dropping hints about how, you know, with the Lassa girl, if it was just the Lassa girl, there'd be, like, less damage, and people would like supers better, and has this whole woman, you know, woman power speech, and ah, just, oh, and then, like, her design... Like, her brother looks really clean cut, and then you have her with, like, her frizzy hair, and her eyelids are always oh, half it's down. Like hippie lifestyle. What? That's like a hippie lifestyle, always dressed in PJs and, like, never professional. <laughs> okay. It wasn't just like that, but, like, even her eyes were halfway down, so even me and Stunt, they're like. It just made me think of, like, Zootopia, like, with his, uh, Nick Wilde, like, how his. Out and his resting like yeah. face, his eyes are half down because it means that's like a character trait. So if her eyes are always halfway down, like what's that? You know, what does that mean? It's not like she's sleeping, you know. Right. But ah, uh, man. I, I was I uh, but the same about what you were saying earlier that she had a plot was you know what it was and no one was trying to make it legal. But the fact is, she was trying to do it behind her brother's back. So her brother is that person that's trying to make it legal. So beyond the fact that it's her brother, he's naive and doing all this thing, and she, you know, she doesn't want to tell him that she's doing all this behind his back. So she has to help him to keep that persona up. Like, she has to let him do whatever he does just to knock him back down. Because he is her competition, per se, you know what I mean? Like, uh, no one else yeah. is illegal, but she... But he's that guy. Yeah, he's the guy trying to do it, so she's like, hmm. Right, so even if they weren't, even if they weren't siblings, she's still that guy out there. Like, she can run that business without her. So it's like, if she just says, oh, I don't think we should make them legal, she'll walk away, and he'll still do it anyway. And then she has to be there anyway. Hmm. So why not just help him and stand by his side? Yeah, she keep an eye on him. <laughs> That's a good point. Like, I kind of, like, I mean, her motivations are fine, and I actually like her alter ego, like the screen slaver. I liked yeah. that part, but I just wish, I don't know, the actual, like, her was just a stronger character. And I feel like a lot of these characters in the film don't have much to do. Like, what are the big problems? Oh, Dash is having trouble with his homework. Violet's having boy problems. The only really interesting kind of thing with the kids is that Jack-Jack is having all these crazy messed up powers and uh, Bob has to deal with it but I mean that's it like they don't give them anything else to work with like 
Really? Well, they just have less of a less of a spotlight. I mean, they had less of a spotlight in the first one. It was mostly focused on Bob, and then it still kind of is, but now it's focused on Bob and Jack Jack. But you can only do so much with Jack Jack. Like, yeah, he was funny. I like the the scene with the raccoon and he's fighting in the yard, and I like all the different powers he has and all like and how he can't really control them and all that like crazy stuff. But not enough to make a film. Like everyone was going crazy over Jack Jack. Yeah, it was great, but not enough to hold the whole film together. You know? Right. I know. I I agree with that. It was like a longer version of Jack Jack Attack. That's basically what it was. <laughs> So, uh, closing near the end of this and the movie, at the end of the movie, you have like a teaser where you see Undermine like crawling at the bottom of the screen and whatnot. And like everyone's all, like an Easter egg, and everyone's thinking about like what that means. That means he's going to be back. Is it just a funny thing to show that he escapes? Hmm. Oh. Maybe it's a funny thing that he escaped. Once again, I feel like this film is open-ended because if they want to make another film, they can. But if they don't feel like it, it's still done. I mean, hopefully if they make another film, it'd be a tighter plot. I mean, they already legalized superheroes, which kind of went pretty easy. If you if you, you ask me, Jay, like, geez, like, that went too smooth. But, man, that's... I feel like they do that on purpose, and they have stuff in the credits that means something. Maybe it's just the right. fact that he got away, and if they do make another one, <laughs> they can have another battle. Because that battle went way too fast. I like the Underminer battle way better than, like, the ending with the ship. Or, right. I'm that, with the yacht. I want to see all of them doing this together. Yeah, the thing with just stopping the boat is just too, too bland. Like, I want to see more versatile, more movement, more, you know, this, that. <laughs> but what if he just comes back um, in the third, and then they finally, if they get another rematch, <laughs> hopefully they catch him. Right. Well, I think, overall, I mean, I guess if you had to rate it from, like, what is it, one to five, like five stars, five being the best, mm. what would you rate it, or you look? Oh, this is hard. Maybe three or three and a half stars. I can't give it four because four is saying it's really close to perfect, and it's not. But if I say three, it just means it's just okay. I mean, in my heart of hearts, I think as a film it's just okay, but I personally think I like it, and I think that's why a lot of people like it because they have that nostalgia lens on, you know? Right. So what would you I give think, it? I uh, think personally I'll give it like a four. But, like, you know, being a critic and whatnot, I think I give it a harsh, like, 3.2. <laughs> See? So, you, like, personally, I'd give it a 4, but if I had to be harsh, you know, be a real critic, a 3.2? Why a 3.2? Because 3.5 is too much and 3 is too low. You gotta put it in the middle. Then it's, like, 3.25? <laughs> sure. I'm mean, good with that. 3.25. So, do you... Or 3.00025. <laughs> Would you want them to make a sequel, like a third installment of The Incredibles? Mm, that's a real good question. I mean, well, I would say why not? Because it's a, I don't know. I feel like it would sell. Obviously. I think it would mm-hmm. do good. I don't know if it would do as good, but I think it would do good. And so far for me, the only sequel I feel like is the best for being a number three movie is Toy Story, which was unsurprisingly, surprisingly for me, like really, really good for it for the time gap of making a third movie. I mean, I don't want to wait fourteen more years for it, but even if they <laughs> happen to do and they make another one, I would see it. I wouldn't expect much, and they would have to surprise me, like Toy Story did. They, I, I would go in there and be like, "Oh, it's just, it's just incredible, it's predictable," and they hit you with some pizzazz, and you come out like, "God dang!" <laughs> I feel you. I mean, like, once again, they want to make a third one, I'm all for it. Just don't be, you know, 14 years. Like, jeez, do it soon. I think folk, I think Pixar should just honestly focus on their more original films because they're making more and more sequels and less, less more and less uh, original films. 
I think they can they shine in their original films when they do sequels. Oh, that's that's a good way to wrap this up. You know, Incredibles two is good, but it, it feels like any sequel. Like you made it just for money, and I'm sure like Brad Bird, he's a genius. Like I like his films and all, and I'm pretty sure and I'm sure he had a story. Like he didn't just make it just for money, but sometimes that's how fe sequels feel. They don't feel like they got made because someone had a story to tell. They feel like they got made because they knew it was going to make a lot of money. Because Incredibles, regardless of whether it's terrible or awesome, it's going to make a lot of money. <laughs> right, and I, I, my personal thing is I always feel that sequels just fill in the gap. Because maybe, like, whether they have an original story or not, they have to, I feel like, like everyone, they have to put something out to be, uh, what's the word, relevant. Because, relevant. Right, because right, right now, they, let's say they come out with an original story about something brand new in 2020. And they're like, well, what can we do between now and 2020? Because if we have nothing, I mean, people are going to wait, but I don't know. I feel like they'll just lose money, and Pixar doesn't lose money. So so they got to put, like, Wreck-It Ralph 2 that's coming out, and freaking uh, Incredible 2, you know, you got to make all these new things. Because, oh, yeah, because then they have this new Dumbo live-action thing coming out. So, oh, yeah. Alrighty. I feel like that's going up the big age too. They're making all these live action because like, oh yeah, October or they come out with Mowgli, new Jungle Book, a wow, lot second live action movie. Wait, wait, yeah, like, but have... that's not Disney though. That's another company. Oh, oh, sorry. My apologies, guys. <laughs> but anyway, the point is, I feel like you gotta make all these original Disney movies into live action first, make a couple more sequels, and then we might get back on track. Might, yeah, we're never going to. If we're focusing on sequels and then just remakes. Of live action remakes of the originals, dude. We're gonna be in like sequels and reboots and remakes and never get to the original content. We yeah, will just be about 20, 30. 20, uh, 20, 30 years from now, you know. <laughs> you said 20, 30. No, not 20, 30 years, 2030. No, I know that's what you meant, but oh. <laughs> wait a minute, how, how long is that? Nah, I'd be like 20, 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, um uh, I mean, I think that's about it. Yeah, we're, okay, so, uh, this is the end of this podcast. I don't know if we call it episode one or two, because technically we did episode one, like, in 2013. <laughs> this is episode one and a half reboot. <laughs> so, 2.0. Uh, <laughs> 2.0, man, maybe it's that. Uh, if you like this podcast, it's called Twin Talk. Please like, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Uh, if you want us to make more, we I mean we definitely are going to. But if you have any like suggestions, anything you want us to specifically talk about or debate, we're mostly gonna focus on, uh, like I said, pop culture stuff, some like movies, or jeez, I don't know, video games, and then stuff about our life. We're thinking about doing that, maybe so you can learn more about these two random voices talking. The two random twins. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, for all you other fans, trust me, I'm working on it. I keep telling her we have to do Jurassic World for all you Jurassic Park fans. But she thinks that just because dinosaurs should be extinct, that the conversation should be extinct, too, and not talk about it. But I'm working on it. What? Yeah, I'll stop making up stuff, boy. <laughs> <laughs> nice and line, you, though. And you said it, not me. You're thinking about it? We're talking about it. Exactly. Talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We appreciate it. Keep on... Uh, <laughs> keep on listening, I should say, not watching. Keep on listening out for us, and you take care.